Shalom and welcome. I'm Rabbi and Cantor Anne Heath. I serve the Jewish community of Greater Taunton and am the Rabbi, Cantor, and school principal at Congregation Agudath Achim in Taunton. It's great to have you with us again for another episode of Jewish Traditions Across the Centuries. Much of what you're going to see today will be live action from actual bar or bat mitzvah ceremonies, celebrations that happened in our beautiful 100-year-old synagogue. However, as a preview, I just wanted to give you a bit of a background to what you'll be seeing and the whole environment during which this celebration occurs. In Jewish tradition, Children, as children in most cultures, aren't responsible for everything that they will be responsible for when they're adults. Coming of age in Judaism happens at age 13 for boys and age 12 and a half for girls. And it has nothing to do with the party or the bar bat mitzvah or having one. You become bar bat mitzvah by passing a particular birthday. I became 20 years old or 30 years old or 40 years old, not because I had a birthday party, but because the actual day arrived when chronologically that's what that occurred in my life. So here we are, we're in the synagogue, we work with families to help them have the best celebration possible, but it's not a private celebration, it's a communal celebration of something that has occurred in that young person's life. What has occurred is that they are maturing into a Jewish adult. The mitzvot, the commandments from the Torah and from Jewish texts from the Talmudic times, the young person becomes responsible for those, still guided by their parents, but again, responsible on their own. There's much Jewish education that occurs to help this happen. And even though it's called Hebrew school for many students, it's not just Hebrew, it's Jewish ethics, Jewish values, Jewish history, Jewish text, Jewish culture, so many different aspects of being a Jew and living a Jewish life. The celebration of bar bat mitzvah can start to feel very hemmed in for families, as if they're going step by step. Now the rabbi says I have to do this, and the cantor says I have to do this, and the principal, I have to come to these classes. And we encourage our families to step back and put God on the guest list. Not only a book for parents, but a volume for children. This book helps families and young people explore how to reclaim the spiritual meaning of your child's bar or bat mitzvah. Bar means son, subject to the commandments of Torah, and bat means a daughter, subject to the commandments of Torah. And it's not about the party. It's about this life passage where we invest in our young people the opportunity to be fully functioning as adults in the Jewish community. Additionally, you can make your own bar or bat mitzvah, a book that encourages people to have a personal approach to creating a meaningful rite of passage. Now, sometimes parents who are very busy are more than happy to leave all of this to uh, the rabbi or the principal and do what others in their congregations have done but there are many opportunities to have this not just be a particular, okay, the kid had the bar mitzvah, now what's next? Oh, graduate from eighth grade, now get a driver's license, now graduate from high school. That this is a moment which has personal meaning, religious import, and is fully supported by the community. As you look at the videos from various celebrations that have occurred in our congregation, I encourage you to listen to the explanations that I've had a chance to give. And there will be some times where, even though there is something going on in the video, I'll be speaking over it to help you understand what's happening. There's a lot to look at. You'll just have the highlights. But I encourage you to continue to, to discover Jewish traditions across the centuries. Thank you. When the Torah is actually out and people are called to recite the blessings or to hold the Torah, um, we Jews know to wear the, the home team outfit, uh, so we're going to wear a talit and a head covering. Sarah is going to now suit up or dress out for Shabbat morning in the synagogue, and by doing so, she's going to slip out from where she's sitting, 
and come join her grandparents in front of her, Adelbert and Arvine Peckman. They have generously gifted to her her talit, her prayer shawl. So she's going to take it out of its carrying case. And Sarah picked this out. She had a chance to choose its colors. This is um, something in which we're clothed. And it includes on its four corners, seat seat, one seat seat, two seat seat. And these seat seat have 613 knots. Each of them represents one of the 613 commandments from the Torah, not uh, ritual commandments and ethical commandments. And before we don our ritual garb, there's a blessing. So Sarah actually is lucky enough to have it written on the atara. So she's going to recite the blessing, put the talit on, ask her grandparents to help use the talit clip. Sometimes the beautiful slippery ones do exactly that. They slip. And then she'll give them a big hug and a kiss and thanks, and she'll join me on the bima. Out of the 613 commandments, 365 of them, which of course is the number of the days of the year, are the thou shalt not. And that's reminding us, the, our rabbis and sages kind of did the math, reminding us that every day there's something we should avoid doing to keep um, from sinning. There are 248 positive commandments, or that you should do such and such, in ancient days, physicians believed that there were 248 bones in a person's body. So therefore, with all of oneself, with all of the bones of your body, you should be doing positive things, the positive commandments from Torah. Before and we turn for this Katsi Kaddish, I am reminded that even though I'll be announcing page numbers throughout the service, it's our Jewish obligation as an individual to pray. There are only certain prayers that require a community or a minion of 10. So if you find yourself drifting in and out of what we're praying, whether you're Jewish or Christian or otherwise, or whether you find something interesting and you want to stay with that, that's perfectly all right. There's no need to officially be on the page with everybody else. If this were a play, like those in which Sarah and her younger sister Jenna participate, this would be the end of Act One. And if you uh, understand about the way drama works, by the time you get to the end of Act One, you have what's known as the rising action. And so in our tradition at a service like this, the rising action is the fact that we have come in and then Birkot HaShachar, the morning blessings, Pesuke de Zimra, the verses of praise, we've gotten ourselves warmed up. And then we did Shema Uvirchoteha, the Shema and its blessings, where we kind of set ourselves to remember our covenant with God. And then we did Tefillah, our prayers, having agreed, having reminded ourselves, having prayed again that we are indeed in covenant with God, then we pray the Tefillah and ask not for things, but we praise God. On Shabbat and on festivals, we don't request things from God. We imagine that we are living in a time, in a particular day, where everything is as it should be. Six days during the week, we can ask for parnassah, for economic income, for security, for safety, for health, but not today, not on Shabbat. So the rising action is that it's time to learn and study. All of these things come to uh, provide us with the background, the emotional, the spiritual background to be taught. We're open to learn, and that's what our Torah portion, our Torah study will do. Now, like any good play, any good drama, there are lots of parts in this section. So uh, if you felt like you just had a speaking part from the seats, from the congregation, some among you will be honored today to have a chance to ascend, to come up to the bima to offer blessings over our Torah readings. Sometimes the Torah will come to you, and we will find that uh, both at the beginning and the end of our Torah readings, uh, Sarah will carry the Torah throughout the congregation. Uh, the custom of congregations is that we revere the words on the Torah, and so when the ark is open, and when the Torah is not at rest, we ask that you rise. And also, when the ark is open or the Torah is moving, we ask that wherever you are, you stay where you are. So if, um, it has to do with um, respect for the Torah and the words that are on it. Around you might find that you'll see some people taking 
their, um, their tzitzio, the corners of their tali, and touching it and kissing. Again, it's respect and love. The words of God are the words that underpin our lives and allow us to, uh, to prosper not as, as spiritual beings. This business of the Torah portion, what are we doing? We are reading a small part of the five books of Moses today. And Sarah is going to teach us about this small part of the Torah portion called the Midbar. In this scroll is the secret of our people's life from Sinai until now. Its teaching is love and justice, goodness and hope. Freedom is its gift to all who treasure it. In most congregations, there is a Baal, or Baalat Kriya, a person who chants and points and points to the words in the Torah scroll and chants at the same time. When I was in rabbinical school and just a cantor, uh, it was a little too much for me to both learn Torah to be a rabbi and learn Torah for each Shabbat. So we got in the habit of our students pointing while I chanted. When I was out of rabbinical school in 2007 and had the time to actually learn each Torah portion to chant during the week, uh, the young people were offended because they had this job that they had learned to enjoy and they no longer got to do. So we have maintained the practice of my chanting while our students point and it does actually help them become better Hebrew readers and allows them to draw close to the Torah. So um, she's well surrounded by uh, people who love and care for her on the bima. Uh, they are standing on either side to follow along and make sure that what is recited is proper and correct. Also, if you kind of close your eyes and imagine that this, um, this squish, you don't have to close them completely, that this reading table is actually the Ark of the Covenant. If you look up in your Funkin Wagnalls or online on Google, you will see that the Ark of the Covenant is this gold box and on either end are cherubim, or as we call them, cherubim, who are watching over it because what's in the Ark of the Covenant but the, the tablets of the law. Not only the tablets of the law the second time, but the broken tablets of the law the first time. So the, um, Dr. Helfen and Mr. Sherman are actually in the position of being the angels, the guardian angels, over this Torah reading so that the word of God uh, comes correctly to all who would learn and hear. So when someone comes up to the Torah, it's called having an aliyah. And Sarah, of course, is here already. So the only way to get her up is to send her down. But we're not going to just send her down. We're going to send her out to get kind of the last minute support she needs from her grandparents, from her friends and family before we can then have her come back up to the Bhima. So Sarah, you're going to get sent down, do what you need to do without taking too long, get hugs and kisses, add girls, go for it. And then if you stand right by Grammy and Grampy, I'll call you up officially for your Aliyah as Bat Mitzvah. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Vayidaber Adonai El Moshe El Aharon Lemor Al Tahritu Et Shevet Mishpichot Hakati Mito Chalavim Vizot Asulahem Vichayu Velo Yamutu Vigishtam Et Kodesh Hakurashim Aharon Uvanav Yavo U Vesamu Otam Ish, ish. We invite Sarah's parents, Mike Peckman and Gail Peckman, to the Bema. They have blessings to recite at this moment. We will ask that Gail do the Hebrew and Mike do the English. They will have their own parental blessings later on in the service. These are the official ones that are very traditional for parents. First one they do together and then we'll chant to heck and then they do the last one.
ברוך אתה אדוני שנתן לנו את הכבוד לתת לך תורה. Blessed is the Eternal, our God, who has granted us the privilege of bringing Torah to you. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Sarah, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless Mike and Gail, parents of Sarah, who celebrate her becoming bat mitzvah today. They thank you for the strength you have granted them to rear their daughter so that she could reach this time. Guide them to recognize their daughter's new responsibilities among the Jewish people. Bless them with joy and fulfillment on this day and every day. And let all of us here say, Amen. Amen. So as Mike and Gail give Sarah a big hug and they return to their seats, Sarah has been working on additional texts to chant for us. The reading from the prophets. And after she does the blessing before that, she will have a chance to teach us. There are many adults in this congregation who seldom, if ever, have a chance to teach from the Bema, but Sarah will have such an opportunity on her reaching her Jewish majority. There is the background for the Haftarah and then the translation of the Haftarah. Sarah will be chanting the opening lines and the closing lines. The closing lines of these Haftarah of this Haftarah are the verses that are recited when we put on phylacteries or are to fill in. You may have, if you're not Jewish, you may have seen pictures of Jews that have black straps wrapped around their arms with a box up here and then a box on their head. Uh, and these have within them the sacred text, uh, not unlike the ones we chanted earlier in this service, the Shema. And uh, as you read these lines about betrothal at the end, it has to do with our connection to God is the metaphor of our being betrothed as a man and a woman are together before marriage. So Sarah, you've done a good job practicing and you'll do a great job here. Okay. And I'm back here covering you. Baruch <laughs> Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher My Torah portion is called B'midbar. It may be found in the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 4, verse 20. In general, my Torah portion focuses on counting all the male Jews over 20 years of age, excluding the Levites. Finally, the thank yous. First of all, I absolutely want to thank my mom and dad for organizing all of this, and also constant nagging constantly nagging me about practicing so I didn't stink today. I would also like to thank Rabbi Heath and Mr. Sherman for teaching me everything I needed to know for today. Our students have a fairly standard outline for their speeches, for their divrei Torah, their words of Torah. And as you notice, after she provided a brief background and her key idea, she taught in the names of others. So she does get a chance to give us her original teaching but we always teach in the names of those who have gone before us so that tradition can be shared. So thank you very much for that, Sarah. And as you know at this point, um, what's that phrase? It's all over but the shouting. Well, it's not quite all over but the shouting, but the <sighs> you can relax your shoulders. You've been, you've been pretty calm, and I congratulate you. This is something that many adults wouldn't be comfortable doing. I'll ask that you now rise because we are going to be taking the Torah and putting it back in the ark. Jenna Peckman, you will be joining the Torah procession as it comes around, though, since we'll be going down this way. If you didn't have a chance to make it when we did the first Torah procession, you know that we're rising, we'll be singing songs. Sarah's going to hold that up nice and high on her shoulder. Yeah. You got it? Okay. And when she returns, we'll remain standing as we are able. She'll have a prayer before the Torah is returned to the ark. The prayers that we chant are on page 178. <laughs> our God and God of our ancestors, on this, my bat mitzvah day, as I celebrate my entrance into Jewish adulthood, I stand before you and this congregation, part of my Jewish heritage and its values. Thank you, O Lord, for allowing me to be part of a living family in a caring community. May I always strive to be worthy of their concern by doing my share on behalf of others. 
At this moment, I declare my willingness to be yet another link in the chain of Jew Jewish tradition. I pray that I may live up to the task of being a faithful, committed Jew. Give me the knowledge and willingness to help implement the visions of our prophets and sages, to love my neighbor, neighbor as myself, to be compassionate, to pursue justice, and to walk humbly before the Lord. As we come to the closing minutes of our service this morning, we turn to an opportunity to have uh, Sarah's family and our community offer her thanks and congratulate her. And at this moment, we invite Sarah and her parents, Mike and Gail, to the Bema for brief words of congratulation and blessing. Sarah, um, you know, since that uh, June, you know, June uh, morning in uh, 2002, <laughs> under a beautiful strawberry moon, um, you've been the light, one of the lights of our lives. Um, we're so proud of everything you've done. You're a kind, compassionate, gentle, caring, um, person. I love everything you've done. You're so intelligent. Um, you know, as is evident by your bat mitzvah projects, the two of them are just, you know, just giving, giving, giving. That's all you do. You just uh, make us so proud of everything you do. When you bring home your high honorable report card, just icing on the cake, you know. Um, we love you so much. So proud of you. Great job today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you just take my breath away every day. Everything you do, your heart. It's just, you're beyond generous. Your thoughts, the way you care about other people, just always touch me. I'm so proud of you and the path you've chosen and the path I see you heading down. I love you very much. So you've heard a lot this morning about mitzvot. There's one mitzvah, there are two mitzvot. And Sarah has become bat mitzvah. She's become a young woman subject to the commandments. She's taken the first step in a long journey. She became bat mitzvah when she turned 13, and we're celebrating that today. She now is on this long path throughout the rest of her life that might be considered the journey of free will. And when you succeed in the challenge of free will, you get closer to God. And according to Judaism, this is a spiritual journey of life, the spiritual journey, and it only starts at Bar Bat Mitzvah. Until this time, her parents have been responsible for this journey. And in light of this, we can ap appreciate the significance of this milestone because you are truly, you heard your parents say this blessing, thankfully, I have a lot of burdens in life, and the burden of this person keeping up with all the mitzvot um, is no longer ours. And they have this little lull between 13 and 16 when she gets a driver's license. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> I know dad's going, no, it never happened. So, um, so you're responsible, and we know that. You've already shown that you're responsible. Choosing to do a mitzvah brings you closer to God. When you act by yourself and you're motivated by whatever comes within you, you're expressing yourself. And that may be great, but it can never be greater than who you are at that very moment. At best, it'll be a full expression of who you are. But when you start to observe the mitzvot, the commandments, you're doing things commanded by a source outside of yourself, uh, the eternal source, God, the divine, the eternal one, the holy, and you now have more than your just own your own resources. So when you have the mitzvot, ben adam la'atzmo, between a person and his or herself, ben adam l'chavero, between a person and his friends, and ben adam l'makom, between a person and God, you now have this great resource. So when you act because you're commanded by a source outside yourself, you now are going to be an expression of that source. You're going to be an expression of godliness. And so we offer this prayer for you today. All of us here are sacred vessels, channels through which the divine flows into this world, and each of us is uniquely formed so as to bring forth one particular aspect of the mystery of all creation, the mystery that is God. And we give thanks for all of who we are. So from the book of Psalms, we say, Pi yedaber chokmah, v'chagun libi tevunot. May your mouth speak wisdom, 
and may the meditations of your heart bring forth understanding. And as you spoke about the Israelites being counted, we know that you can be counted. Throughout this morning, there have been lots of things put in front of Sarah to say, to recite, to pray. I'm going to ask you now to rise as Sarah opens the ark, and she has a chance for her own moment of private and personal prayer before the ark. Prayer shawls are not only worn around us, but they may be used as a shelter of peace, a sukkot shalom. Little girls who stand in front by Sarah. Now, I'm not holding it up. I've been doing a lot this morning. You guys can do this. That's the point. So this talit, this prayer shawl, is a sukkot shalom, a shelter of peace. And just as her extended family is holding up the shelter of peace over her now, we hope that they continue. We pray that they continue to do so through her whole lifetime. And for Sarah, having had this model in the sanctuary, she can learn to take out in her life and work with others to build Sukkot Shalom throughout the world. Kiddush is the name of a ritual that involves reciting blessings over a cup of wine. It takes place at the beginning of Shabbat and before Jewish festival meals. It's also performed during synagogue Shabbat services so that anyone who is away from home and spending time in the community will have the opportunity to hear Kiddush. Usually the head of the house will recite Kiddush over a cup of wine, and then everyone present will take a sip of the wine. In the synagogue setting, the rabbi will usually recite the blessing, and then the cantor or another appointed person, today, our bat mitzvah Sarah, will take a sip from the cup. It's grape juice, not Manischewitz, I believe. I know. Yeah, phew, right? So why do we do this? In Talmudic times, centuries ago, wine was a daily beverage. And so Kiddush was the blessing that introduced the distinguishing of drinking the wine for everyday meals for Shabbat. This means we're sanctifying the day, indicating it's a different day. It reminds us that Kiddush means sanctification. Likdosh, Kedoshim, Kedusha, any, any Hebrew word that has those sounds in it has to do with sanctifying and making holy. So I do know that in the Christian world, there's communion, there's wine, there's bread. There are many symbols which look identical to, identical to what we're doing, but the reason and the theology underneath them are completely different. We are not making the wine holy. Nothing happens to the wine. We are just acknowledging by the blessing over this wine, over this grape juice, that indeed we are sanctifying and blessing the day and making the day holy. Shalom. Rabbi Heath again. It's been wonderful to share with you how our congregation celebrates young people becoming bar or bat mitzvah. Other congregations across North America, in other cultures, in Israel, in Italy, in South Africa, in Australia, in India, all places where Jews live and reside, will have some of the very same core elements as ours, but the outward piece might look quite different. So what you've had a chance to watch and listen to is not the be-all, end-all, and there's plenty of more that we can learn. Thank you for sharing with us. You're welcome to visit our congregation and learn more about Judaism and its essence and vision for how we are to live our lives in the world. And traditions support us and support this work. Shalom.